Alright, so welcome back guys, or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm Vision here with Blind Entertainment, bringing you guys in our video. Today I'm going to be doing my review for The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 14, Scars. So if The Walking Dead is something you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that bell icon. That way you don't miss any more Walking Dead content from me in the future. Now let's begin. So we start this episode off with flashbacks to months right after Rick's supposed death. From the viewpoint of Daryl and Michonne. Now I really like how they touched on this. Because I feel like this was something that needed to be touched on. Is did they search for Rick? We know Daryl searched all the way down to the ocean and back. So we get some good insight there. You see Michonne finding his gun. So she believes he's a walker. Some really good insight. And some really good back and forth with Daryl in the woods. You know he's not going to come back until he finds Rick. It's a really good opening opening montage for the episode and it was just really good not much else to go off of there it was just kind of an okay scene there it wasn't like doing the best but it was just okay just tying up some loose ends however the episode finally gets going in the flashback montage when we see alexandria return with a group or a woman and it's revealed to be this woman jocelyn who is an old friend of michonne now this is where I, I'm going to have my first con here. And I know people will say, oh, it's TV. It's not a big deal. But really, Michonne was from Atlanta. Give, suppose that this Josh, Jocelyn is from Atlanta as well. They're now in Virginia. The likelihood of them running into each other is questionable at best. So that's my biggest con here is like, I don't believe that they would just so happen to find Jocelyn. It's I I I can I can deal with it and put up with it, but it just I don't know. It feels like just plot convenience. I could understand if it was just some random woman, but since she's friends with Michonne, I just feel like there's a plot hole there where it's like they just happen to run into each other in the apocalypse. I feel like, and I think it was even mentioned on that this was kind of took taken from what Kirkman did with Michonne at the Commonwealth with. Her daughter, for anybody who doesn't read the comics, she ended up finding her daughter at, at this new community coming up in a few, in a, another season or two. I feel like they did something like that here. But again, it just felt a little bit forced and a little bit unrealistic. I can get it from the Commonwealth perspective, but here, it's a little questionable at best for me. And I, I just kind of can't overlook the whole thing of how they just so happen to find each other. But Jocelyn is freaking out because she's got other people out there that she left behind. And Michonne t has, sends a group out to go find them to reunite her with the rest of her people. And it's revealed that it's a bunch of kids. So th this is a very interesting concept with the kids. I really liked how they talked about how the kids are more resilient than the adults. And how the kids were the only ones that made them. And one thing I'm curious about was what was Jocelyn's kind of job prior to the apocalypse was she a teacher how'd she get in to find all these kids were they just members of her group whose parents died it's just something i'm very curious about i wish they'd a little go i'm not saying go all out and give a, give like a full backstory on jocelyn that was not needed but maybe t kind of talk about where these kids came from although they did probably grow up in the apocalypse because the apocalypse has been going on for now a couple what, 10 years now, the oldest kid was like a teenager, so yeah, they probably would have grown up in the apocalypse, most of them, so I guess you could kind of overlook that to an extent, but you got Michonne, who's still grieving over the loss of Rick, and she's dealing with it with this new friend, who she's who's kind of, I'm not saying like replaced Rick, but filled the void that Rick has left, and she kind of lets her guard down, and these two friends are finally reunited, and it ends up they she ends up take they end up doing this thing where I find interesting was where the kids end up having a sleepover, because the uh, kids of Jocelyn's group make friends with the kids from Alexandria. I'm curious as to what the time frame of this episode was. Did this only happen over like a few days or a week, or was this a couple months time? That's something that I feel like could have been explained a little better, because I feel like just a couple days it doesn't make sense, but a couple. Like a couple months makes a little bit more sense to me. But maybe it's just me. I don't know. Let me know how you feel about that. But uh, they have a sleepover. And then you got R Michonne and Scott who has a son now. And Frankie one of Negan's ex-wives who come to pick up their kids. And they are missing. 
and they end up finding out that Jocelyn's group took them all and they raided the pantry and the medical supplies and left with the kids, which I think was a very good way to set some things up. And I feel like it was a good way to go with this episode. So then we got the next day and Michonne and Daryl go out looking for Judith and the rest of the taking kids. Now, my biggest con here, though, is how come Scott and Frankie and the other parents didn't go out with them? Now, I get maybe some of them aren't, like, the best fighters, but Scott fought in the war against Negan. He's a fighter. Why didn't anybody else go out? Aaron, Rosita, how come no one else went out looking? I mean, I, I think that was the biggest plot hole, especially since she was pregnant. Like, really, you're going to let her go out by herself? I feel like that was a big plot hole. Yes, I get Daryl was there, but still, plot hole, like, really, just those two went out? I don't know. It just bothered me that they just put those two to, to go out and look for the kids. I get it. They needed it to be only Daryl and Michonne that are uh, impacted by these x scars, But they could have brought the, the other parents out with them and have them just find them later. But then you got Daryl and them finding them at the school building. Now, fun fact, the school building was the same or is the same school building that Gareth and the Terminus group held up at back in season five. So that, I thought that was a pretty cool tidbit of information. But they end up getting captured and end up be, getting tied up by Jocelyn's group. And this is where we get the moment of the X scars. Now. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like this episode, to the to an extent, was overhyped with the reveal. Because from what we know is that they scarred them on the back. It makes the kids stronger. But at the same time, why would you brand them in the back? Because these are brands. Why would you brand them on their back? The point of a brand is to know, know who they are. If you're going to hunt them, like, even if you're going to hunt them, like, what? They wear clothes over their backs. You're not going to be able to see this brand mark. So that's my biggest issue with the branding. And I get it. Jocelyn wants to make them stronger. And I get it. But do it somewhere else. Like the, I would like argue do it to their arm. Do it to their hand. Their forearm. Something like that. But their back? That just makes no sense. And that just frustrated me a lot. Because I, I feel like they had a good thing going. But I feel like the whole branding thing was what killed the episode for me. Now, if they just end up getting like little itty bitty scars or something like that. New scars that we hadn't seen before. Okay, that would be believable that they got hurt during this fight. But branding them makes zero sense. And I get scars are harder to see. Not everybody would notice them. But for us eagle-eyed fans out there who watch this show every week, we would take note and notice them. And it would be a good, it would be a better reveal than this whole X scar thing, which I, in my opinion, was a big missed opportunity here and kind of overhyped to an extent. But then you got Daryl and Michonne, of course, they break free. That's my biggest issue here is we know enough, like they're not going to die. So the, the kind of suspense and everything is taken out of the episode too. I get it. We know they're going to survive. So that, that kind of is an issue you can't get around, but it just felt a little bit, I don't know. Lackluster in that area, but they end up escaping. Michonne ends up being get, getting free and killing Jocelyn. But then the teenager, the second in command, orders I think it's the kid's name is Winnie or whatever this girl to go kill Judith and the rest of the kids. Which at that moment, Michonne is forced to kill the rest of the kids. Now, look, I'll put it this way they did a good thing here. The darkness of it with her killing the kids was great, well handled. I know some fans will argue they should have showed it. It's TV, they're not gonna, I don't care, I, I'm actually glad they didn't show it, I don't think, personally myself, I don't know if I'd be able to stomach Michonne killing kids. I feel like, if I'm gonna compare this to one thing, I think they handled the X-Scars better than the 100 handled Octavia and the Dark Year in Season 5. They did this way better than the whole Octavia and the Dark Year. This was handled a lot better, and I I, I just liked it a lot better too. But you end up, Michonne kills them all. She finds Judith and everybody's, everything's good. She brings everybody home and everybody's good after that. So overall, I think it was a good storyline, just a little bit poor execution. But nothing that like I'm going to say was horrible with about this episode with this storyline. Now, as for the current storyline, we got Henry there. He gets healed up. They end up leaving, of course, heading over to the kingdom. 
not Majestic go off at air, but we got Judith who runs off after hearing what hap- after hearing what Michonne said to Whitty and how she's not happy that they're not helping Kingdom. So Michonne goes and talks to Negan. Now I really like the scenes here with Negan in this episode and how they bring up how he told Judith how, like what actually happened with Gwen and Abraham and all the other horrible things he did. I really like that and how he says, you know, I'm not treating her like a kid. You're hiding things from her. I really like that. And it kind of is doing the thing that we need it to do. It's redeeming Negan in a sense. And I know there are fans who won't want to see him redeemed, but it's, it is going to happen. So after that conversation, he's able to think about it and find Judith. She finds Judith, rescues Judith from a, a few walkers. Now, the thing I'm interested in here. Is the conversation though. The conversation between Judith and Michonne. Because they talk about how Judith thinks that they don't care about. You know. King Ezekiel and all of them anymore. And I really like how they use th- this scene. To, t- to tie in Michonne going to the fair. It was good stuff. My biggest con though here with this episode. Is that Judith mentions that she can remember what happened with Jocelyn's group. I call complete and utter BS on that. Now, I know fans will argue, okay, yeah, she can. No, I've been around kids. I know I've, me, I've kind of studied it as, in a sense in school, kid, like the psychology of kids and stuff. Sure, they'll remember certain things, but they're not going to remember everything. Judith was only three at that point. I've been around kids who have had traumatic in- events happen to them. They're not going to remember all this stuff. I'm calm bull on all of that. I feel like it was just a moment. And I know people say, you're nitpicking about that, but you don't nitpick about how she's able to shoot the gun. I can believe that she can shoot Rick's gun more than that, that than she believed this happened. Because I believe that, or at least I think or can believe that they trained her and taught her how to use Rick's gun where she's able to use it safely and not like have any issues with the recoil effect. Now, first off, I don't know anything too much about guns, but I do believe there's a probably a way they could have done that. But I do have a few issues with that kind of storyline. I do have an issue with her remembering certain things. Look, I can get beyond it and kind of look over it, but it's just a little kind of glaring issue I have there. But then they decide to go to the fair, Michonne and her leave and are heading over there. I'm just surprised that it's just them. I'm surprised they don't have an escort, especially since it's Michonne, the leader, and Judith, the son of Rick Grimes. That just is another little nitpick I have there. But they end up running into Daryl and his crew and offer them a ride. Another nitpick I have here is they just so happen to run into Daryl here. Daryl just happened to be walking by them at this point. Just a little nitpick, but I had to point it out there. And they head off, and as they're arriving at the kingdom, they got two whispers watching them and saying that they must tell Alpha about this, leading into what's coming up in tomorrow's episode. So, it was a good episode. I know there are some fans still arguing about how come we didn't find out what happened, the big beef that happened between Maggie and Michonne. Honestly, I never believed there was a beef between them. I feel like it was the beef was more between Tara and her. And we saw that, I think, back in episode 12 it was. I don't believe that they had a beef with Maggie. I just feel like due to what happened here, they got disconnected from Maggie. And th- that's what happened there. I don't think she had a beef with Maggie. I just feel like she had a beef with Tara and that kind of spilled over into the rest of Hilltop. And she kind of had a maybe had a beef with Maggie because she kind of kept Tara there and then informed her of what was going on. That That's how I look about it. As for my rating for this episode, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 for this episode. Probably one of the weaker episodes. I just feel like it was overhyped. Certain things I had to nitpick at and just don't like about the episode. Overall though, it's still a good episode. Just probably one of the weaker ones out of season 9 for me. But let me know how you feel about this episode in the comment section down below. So yeah, guys, that's my review of The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 14, Scars. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share. And don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that bell icon. That way to miss any more Walking Dead content from me in the future. This has been Vision here with Blind Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.